building skills for the TOEFL IBT. Listening. Chapter 1 Short Passage Skill Practice Skill A Understanding Main Ideas in Organization 1. Campus Life I'm worried about my girlfriend. Why is that? She thinks she's too fat. Is she? No, but she keeps skipping meals. Then she only eats chips and drinks cola. I used to do that. It's called binging. It was no fun. Why did you stop doing it? Well, my doctor told me to eat when I'm hungry. She said, eat till you're full or you'll eat too much later. She said a lot of girls ruin their health this way. Did she say what to eat? She said, eat fruit, vegetables, meats, and grains. Have regular meals and snacks. Get exercise, too. Number 1. What are the people mainly discussing? Number 2. What is the woman's main point? Number 3. What does the man's girlfriend usually eat? Two, music history. We know that Ludwig van Beethoven was born in 1770 in Bonn, Germany, but we're uncertain of the month. Beethoven wrote hundreds of songs. One of his most famous is his Fifth Symphony. The first four notes go like this. Da 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 da! Almost everyone recognizes them. He was the first to use trombones in a symphony. At age 28, he began to go deaf, yet he kept on writing and conducting. He never got married, but after he died, friends found some love letters. We don't know who he wrote them to. Beethoven died in 1827. Number 1. What is the talk mainly about? Number 2. How does the speaker present the information in the lecture? Number 3. Which two statements are correct about Beethoven? Choose two answers. Three, biology. Okay, let's talk about animals we don't see in the winter. Many animals hibernate during the cold months of the year. Basically, they go to sleep. Some animals hibernate in holes in the ground. Others sleep in caves, under bushes, or at the base of trees. Bears hibernate. So do cold-blooded animals, like frogs and snakes. When animals are hibernating, it seems like they're dead. They have slow heartbeats, and they almost stop breathing. They have stored extra energy and fat to keep them alive. By the end of winter, they are very weak. They must eat soon after waking up. 1. What is the topic of the lecture? Two, how does the professor explain the places for animals' hibernation? Three, what is the main idea of the talk? Four, campus life. Hey, Julie, what's up? Hi, Brian. Taking a break from studying, I'm surfing the internet for an MP3 player. Do you like the iPod? Yes, but I need a really small one. Oh, it's small. Really? Someone told me it holds 5,000 songs. It's 3.6 inches tall and 2 inches wide. I have one. 
What's that in centimeters? The math textbook says one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so first I need to multiply 3.6 by 2.54. Here, use my calculator. Thanks. Okay, it's 9.1 centimeters tall and 5 centimeters wide. Just what I need. Number one. What is the topic of the conversation? Number two. What is the man's main point? Number three. What does the device do? Five. Anthropology. Track and field events happened long before they became a sport. The sand people in Africa are one example. They still hold what's called a persistence hunt. The men find the tracks of an antelope herd. They find the antelope and follow them for several days and nights. During this time, they study the animals and choose one. Then the hunt begins. Only the fastest runner will go after the chosen animal. He and the animal may run for as long as eight hours. If the hunter persists, the deer will finally get tired and fall. Then he'll slaughter it. Number one, what is the main idea of the talk? Number two. How does the professor organize the information in the lecture? Number three, what type of hunt is done by the San people? Six, business writing. When you're writing a business letter, it's important to be specific. That is, tell the reader exactly what he or she needs to know. If something is wrong, list what the problem is and what should be done to fix it. If you need information, state clearly what you want to know. Next, um, be positive. Say no in a good way. How can we do that? Use polite language. For example, we regret to inform you that, or. We're sorry, but always keep in mind this golden rule: write the kind of business letter that you would like to receive. Number one, what is the talk mainly about? Number two, why does the woman mention the golden rule? Number three, what are the main points in the talk? Seven, campus life. Come on, Holly, we're going to be late. For what? Today's the day of the parking space lottery. I want to see if I get a parking space for next year. What? You mean if they choose your number, you get a place to park your car? Yes. Parking is very limited. Only a few students can bring their cars, and freshmen are never allowed to park on campus. If your number is chosen, do you get to park for free? No, it costs one hundred twenty dollars a year. So you're hoping to win the privilege of paying money? Yes. Now come on. Number one, what are the people mainly discussing? Number two, which two statements are correct? Choose two answers. Number three, what is the main thing that the man wants? Eight, English. Professor Smith. I forget many English words, 
What's a good technique to remember them? Try using index cards, uh, small pieces of heavy paper. What do I do? On the front of the card, write the new word. On the back, write a definition of the word at the top in English. In English? Yes, no native language. Then divide the bottom part of the back into two halves. On the left, write a correct English sentence using the word. On the right, draw some kind of picture. Anything that helps you remember the word. Then what? Review the cards every day. Number one. What is the talk mainly about? Number two. What does the professor advise the student do? Number three. What two things does the professor emphasize? Scale B. Understanding details and facts. One. Geography. Another name for the South Pole is Antarctica. This is a continent. But no people live there. There's a good reason for this. It's the coldest, windiest place on Earth. The lowest temperature ever measured was in Antarctica, minus 88 degrees Celsius. 98 percent of the ground is permanently frozen, and the continent contains 87 percent of the world's ice. Antarctica's only human occupants are scientists. They go there to learn how Antarctica used to be millions of years ago, when it was located at the equator. Antarctica used to be connected to Australia before all the continents on the planet shifted. Number one, what aspect of Antarctica does the professor mainly discuss? Number two. How much of the world's ice is contained in Antarctica? Three. How does the professor emphasize that Antarctica is cold? Two. Campus life. Hey Joe, where are you going? Are you on your way to class? No, I'm on my way to the recreation center to play basketball. Want to come? I can't. I'm not a member. If you're a full-time student, membership is included in your tuition. Do you have your student ID card? Yeah. Does that mean I can use any part of the rec center? Yes. You can use the swimming pool, the gym, the weight room, anything you want. All you need to do is show your ID card at the door. Hey, cool. I'll come with you. Number one, what is the topic of the conversation? Number two, what does the woman decide to do? Number three, what does the woman need to use the gym? Three literature. If a play makes you laugh, it's a comedy. Comedies have humorous characters and happy endings. A good example of a comedy is Shakespeare's classic *Much Ado About Nothing*. Another popular style is called tragedy. Tragedies usually tell how a hero ruins his life, falling from good fortune to bad fortune because of a tragic flaw in character. One example is the play *Ghosts*. By Henrik Ibsen. Um, modern years have produced a third style called tragicomedy. In tragicomedies, the play seems as though it will end in tragedy, but instead has a humorous or unclear ending. An example is Saint Joan by George Bernard Shaw. Number one, why does the professor mention the play by Ibsen?
Number 2. What are the three types of plays mentioned in the talk? Number 3. Which is an example of a tragic comedy? Four, physics. It's a beautiful blue sky today. Ever wonder why it's blue? It's because the sun's rays scatter or spread out as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. Blue rays are scattered most. They seem to be all over the sky. Yellow rays are scattered less. This is why the sun looks yellow most of the time. But after sunrise and just before sunset, the sun looks red. Why? Because then the rays must travel a longer path into the atmosphere. More of the blue and yellow rays are scattered. The red rays are scattered the least, so they come through in the largest numbers. Number 1. What is the talk mainly about? Number 2. According to the speaker, why is the sky blue? Number 3. Which color of light ray scatters the least? Five. Campus life. Hi, Miss Jansen. Can we keep Romeo and Juliet in our dorm room? What on earth? There are pet hermit crabs. Oh, poor crabs. Don't you think they'd be happier on the beach? Well, at the store they were squished into a little box. We thought they'd be happier with us. We let them out when we're home. We give them baths, too. I see. Do you know what to feed them? There's free internet information. The Hermit Crab Association. They help crabs in captivity. And we will take them back to a beach someday. Number 1. Why does the student go to see the woman? Number 2. Where does the woman suggest the crabs might be happier? Number 3. What reason does the student give to support his idea that the crab should live with him? Choose two answers. Six, University 101. As we study in university, we find we have a lot of reading. It's very productive to learn how to read faster. To do this, You need to know how fast you read now. I'll show you a quick test to find out. But before I do, let me say this. In this test, it's important to understand what you have read. Rushing to beat the clock is pointless. You won't enjoy the reading or understand it well. You'll also get a false measure of your reading speed. When you finish, You should try to see what you remember. Number 1. What is the talk mainly about? Number 2. What does the speaker suggest doing after reading? Number 3. The professor introduces something and then gives a warning. What does he introduce and what does he warn students not to do? Choose two answers. Seven, health. We all know that we can get vitamin D from sunshine. Long winters make it hard to get enough. People who don't get outside often. Don't get enough either. Without vitamin D, we may develop weak bones and teeth. We can get certain kinds of cancer more easily too. Few foods other than fish 
naturally have much vitamin D. So, it's important to get some sunshine every day. But be careful. Too much can cause skin cancer. Notice what most animals that live outside all the time do. They are most active during the hours before sunrise and after sunset. Number 1. What aspect of health does the professor mainly discuss? Number 2. What is the speaker's main point? Number 3. How does the professor emphasize her point about getting enough vitamin D? Eight, campus life. <laughs> hey, Trevor, check this out. I'm trying to study here. Oh, sorry, but this is really funny. What is? This article about strange inventions. Like what? Well, one guy invented a ladder for spiders. It's a rubber strip you can put on the side of your bathtub. <laughs> yeah, what else? A portable seat. You carry it around your waist like a big cushion. Ha, <laughs> that's really stupid. Here's the best one. A car license plate that tells if the driver's a man or a woman. I like that one. Then I could stay away from women drivers. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Number one. How does the girl explain the way she feels about the article? Number two, what does the special license plate tell? Number three, what is true about the inventions described in the article? Skill C. Determining Reasons, Purposes, and Attitudes 1. Campus Life I'm interested in your course on Indian culture. Can you tell me about it, please? Certainly. The course is eight weeks long. There will be a midterm examination, a final exam, and two essays. How do you determine the grades? The final will account for 30% of your mark. The midterm is 15%. The first essay is 10%, and the second essay is 30%. Let's see, 30, 15, 10, 30, that's only 85%. The other 15% is based on your attendance and participation in the class. It sounds interesting. I think I'll take it. Number 1. What are the people mainly discussing? Number 2. What is the main point discussed by the professor? Number 3. What does the man mean when he says this? I think I'll take it. Two. English. One of the most effective ways to increase your vocabulary is through newspapers. They are cheap and they have a wide variety of words. When you read an English newspaper, make a list of 8 to 10 words you don't know. Look them up in a dictionary, then add them to your vocabulary notebook. If you learn 8 new words each day, you will be learning new words faster than the average American. Professor? Yes. How can we remember the words after we write them? Spend 15 minutes each day reviewing words from the previous day. You'll be surprised how fast you learn. Number 1. What is the topic of the lecture? Number 2. What is the professor's main point? Number 3. 
Why does the speaker mention newspapers? Three campus life. I really like art, especially paintings. Really? Do you have a favorite one? Yes, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. What do you like about it? Her smile. If you look closely, it seems she's not smiling at all. Look again. She's smiling. So many artists try to copy that smile. It must be hard to paint something so beautiful. Did you ever notice that she doesn't have any eyebrows? Really? No, I never noticed. I wonder why. Girls in that time shaved their eyebrows. I just read it in her art history textbook. Hey, that's cool. Nowadays, she'd have an eyebrow ring. Number one. What is the woman's main point? Number two. Why do so many artists try to copy Mona Lisa's smile? Number three. What does the man imply about Mona Lisa? Four. Anthropology. In North America. The best weavers are a group of people called the pueblo. That's P U E B L O. The pueblo have been weaving clothes, baskets, and blankets since at least 1,000 BC. At first, they used their fingers to weave together vegetable fibers and animal hair. In the first century AD, they began growing cotton. About this time. They also started using a loom, a kind of um, machine that helped them weave the cotton into cloth more quickly and easily. By the year 1600, the pueblos had sheep, so they began weaving wool, using the same methods they had used for weaving cotton. Number one, how does the speaker present the information in the lecture? Number two, what is the speaker's main point? Number three, why did the pueblos start weaving with a loom? Five, campus life. Have you heard about Mexican turtles disappearing? Yes. It's because they lay their eggs on the beach, right? Yeah, and people eat the eggs. But my professor said there's a plan to save them. What is it? I don't know, but he gave us a phone number. Let's call. Okay, here goes. Hello, Environmental Protection Hotline. How may I help you? I'd like to find out about the program to save Mexican turtles. Yes, of course. I can send you something to read, or you can look at our website, www.enviro.com. Thanks. I'll look at the website. Thanks for calling. Number one, what is the telephone operator's main point? Number two, why does the man call the number? Listen to the part of the conversation again, then answer the question. But my professor said there's a plan to save them. What is it? I don't know, but he gave us a phone number. Number three, what does the man mean when he says this? I don't know. But he gave us a phone number. Six physics. And now the winner of this year's science fair.
Cho Min Su. Min Su, tell everyone about your work. Thank you. Let me tell you about my white noise machine. Does noise ever annoy you or keep you awake? Well, we can lessen noise by using white noise. Think of water. Think of sending one big wave toward another coming in. My machine does that with sound. It can tell how much noise is coming in, then send back white noise. You don't hear it, but it shuts out the noise. I hope that my machine will help those who need quiet. Thank you. Number one. What is the main idea of the talk? Number two. Why did Che Min Su win first prize at the science fair? Listen to the part of the talk again, then answer the question. Let me tell you about my white noise machine. Does noise ever annoy you or keep you awake? Number three. Why does the man say this? Does noise ever annoy you or keep you awake? Seven. Health. Acupuncture is a way of treating sick people. The Chinese developed it over 2,500 years ago, and it is still used today. In acupuncture, small metal needles are inserted into spots on the human body. There are 787 of these spots. Each one is connected to a special body part or system. If um your ear hurts, for example. The doctor will put needles into all the spots connected with your ear. The needles don't hurt because they don't go in very far. Sometimes the doctor runs an electric current through the needles. We don't understand exactly why this helps people. Number one, what is the speaker's main point? Number two. Why does acupuncture help people? Number three. Why does the professor mention ears? Eight. Math. Geometry is the study of points. Now a point is a small dot, like a period, at the end of a sentence. If we have two points, we know that there can be other points between them. There can also be a line. The line is continuous; it has no space between each point. Part of a line with points at each end is called a line segment. Two line segments can be the same length. We call these line segments congruent. That just means the line segments are equal in length. Number one, how is the information in the lecture organized? Number two, what are the three main ideas in the presentation? Choose three answers. Number three, why does the professor mention periods? Skill review. One, campus life. What should I do to prepare for my exams? I have some old exams from last year. Do you think it's a good way to study? Yes, it can help. Being familiar with the way the test is made up is beneficial. You may be less anxious at exam time. First, quickly look over all the material you've studied. Then decide which things you need the most work on. Then use questions from the exams to practice. Great! I should just memorize all the answers. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Questions on the new exam will probably be different. You need a strong understanding of the material. Memorizing won't replace a thorough knowledge of the subject.
I guess that's probably true. So, what else can I do? Make sure you go to all the review sessions. Go to your professor's office hours too. I always do that. I really like my professor. Good. In the exam, be sure to read the directions carefully. They may be different from the practice exams. Also, make sure you get to the exam in plenty of time. Get comfortable before it begins. Okay. Thanks for your help. Number one. What is the conversation mainly about? Number two. How does the tutor recommend preparing for exams? Choose two answers. Number three. Which reason does the tutor give to suggest that memorizing answers from old exams is not a good idea? Number four. What does the tutor say about the directions on the exam? Number five. Why does the tutor suggest that the student get to the exam in plenty of time to get comfortable? Listen to part of the conversation again. Then answer the question. Great! I should just memorize all the answers. Number six. What can be inferred about the student? Two. Physical science. Some people once thought that only four things made up the Earth: earth, water, air, and fire. Earth, water, and air are all forms of matter, but fire is really different. It may seem the same in that you can see it, feel it, and smell it. You can even move it from place to place, but it really isn't matter at all. It's an activity. It is matter changing form. Of course, fire has to have something to burn. We call this fuel. Fire also has to have air so that it can burn. Usually, when we build a fire, we first put down easily flammable material like newspaper or dry leaves. Then we carefully place pieces of wood over it, leaving room for air. Since fire doesn't start by itself, we need a spark or heat source to start it. Matches, lighters, even magnifying glasses can be used. That's a glass piece, specially made for seeing small things. We can make sunshine through it to form a very hot spot of light. Wood has to reach about 150 degrees Celsius. Then something in the wood changes. Part of the wood turns into gas. We see this gas as smoke. The parts of the wood that don't burn change to ash. This is the soft white powder left after a fire. A third part of the wood becomes carbon or char. This char or charcoal burns slowly and hotly without smoke. This gives us enough time to cook food. Number one. What is the topic of the lecture? Number two. What is needed to create a fire? Number three. What two statements are true? Choose two answers. Number four. Why is char or charcoal used as fuel for cooking fires?
Number five. Why do we see smoke when we sit beside a wood fire? Listen to part of the conversation again. Then answer the question. Earth, water, and air are all forms of matter, but fire is really different. Number six. What does the professor imply when she says this? But fire is really different. Skill D. Matching words and categories. 1. Campus life. Hey, Rita, what are you looking at? I'm looking at a Nova Scotia College of Art catalog. I'm going to transfer there. They have a great lithography program. Oh, yeah? So you'll have to send them your transcript. I guess so. What exactly is on my transcript? Well, basically all your courses and grades. How do I get it? At the transcript office, it's $8. It takes the secretary three or four days to do it for you. Great. I can do this soon. I really want to learn to do lithos. Number one. What are the students mainly discussing? Number two. Why does the man mention the woman's transcript? Number three. Match the phrases to the correct column in the chart. Two, communications. Do you say what you really mean? We learn from listening to others. It's a good way to learn, but if you're not careful, we learn other people's mistakes too. Here's an example. You often hear we've reached a consensus of opinion. Consensus already means that all of the people have the same idea. Adding of opinion is not needed. A saying that's used too often is called a cliché. We have to be careful in using clichés. For example, it's easy to say something like, I love chocolate. What we really mean is, I like it a lot. Number one. What is the topic of the lecture? Listen to the lecture again and answer the question. We have to be careful in using clichés. For example, it's easy to say something like, I love chocolate. What we really mean is, I like it a lot. Number two. Why does the professor say this? It's easy to say something like, I love chocolate. Number three. Indicate whether each item below characterizes effective communication. For each phrase, mark the correct box. Three. Sociology. More and more U.S. parents are choosing to homeschool their children. This means the parents teach them at home. They do this for several reasons. Some think public schools are too dangerous. Some think the education level is too low. And some want to teach their children about their religion. This is not allowed in public schools. At home, children can help choose which subjects to study. And since there are only one or two students, the teacher, mom or dad, can give them lots of attention. Of course, homeschoolers might get lonely, and parents are sometimes not the best teachers. Number one, what is the topic of the lecture? Number two. Why does the speaker mention that parents might not be the best teachers? Number three. Match each detail about homeschooling with the correct heading.
Four history. Albert Einstein is considered the greatest scientist of the 20th century. He was born in Germany in 1879 and was interested in science from an early age. He had trouble in school. In fact, he failed on his first try to enter university. In 1896, however, he did enter a university in Switzerland. In 1921, he won the Nobel Prize for Physics. When Hitler came to power in Germany, Einstein moved to the United States. He told the U.S. president that Hitler was making an atomic bomb. The U.S. made one first. This new bomb helped end World War II. Number one. What is the topic of the lecture? Number two. Why does the professor mention that Einstein failed in his first attempt to enter university? Number three, match each detail about Einstein with the correct heading. Five, campus life. <sighs> Quit yawning. I'm trying to read. Sorry, I'm just tired today. Our biology professor said when you yawn, it's because your lungs need more oxygen. It cleans your blood. Hmm. My blood must be filthy then. You're probably not breathing as deeply as you should. Why don't you go outside and take a few deep breaths? That'll give you lots of oxygen. Yeah, but I'll still be tired. Maybe a break in some fresh air will give you some energy. I need a break from this boring textbook. If you're bored, go outside and try doing something interesting. Good idea. I think I'll go for a bike ride. Number one, what are the people mainly discussing? Number two. Why does the woman suggest that the man go outside? Number three, indicate whether each item below helps your body get more oxygen. For each word or phrase, mark the correct box. Six, geography. South America is a large continent, but it has only 12 countries. The largest country in South America is Brazil. It is almost as big as the United States. A lot of people don't realize that from just looking at a map. Brazil takes up almost half the land in South America. The smallest country is Suriname. This is smaller than many U.S. states. South America lies between the Atlantic and Pacific oceans. The equator crosses the northern part of the continent. At this point, South America is about 1,500 kilometers wide. The southernmost point in South America is a narrow tip called Tierra del Fuego. This is only about 300 kilometers north of Antarctica. Number one. What is the professor talking about? Number two. Why does the professor mention the United States? Number three. Match each detail about South America with the correct heading. Seven. Campus life. Hello, Jad. What's happening? Not much. What are you doing with that camera? I'm taking pictures for our class photo exhibit next week. Where's that going to be? In the student center. I need to get three or four good shots of nature on campus. Will all the photos be of nature? No. There are three other categories: students, professors, and buildings. And students are taking all the pictures? Yes. We have to take them, develop them, enlarge them, and frame them. Wow, you're going to be busy. Yep, 
Well, I'm going to go photograph the cherry tree blossoms. See ya. Number one. What is the subject of the conversation? Number two. Why is the woman taking pictures on campus? Number three. Indicate whether each phrase below describes a category for the exhibit or a process of photography. For each word, mark the correct box. Eight. Social studies. A population is all the people, animals, or plants living somewhere. Taking a census means getting information about every member of a population. Census information helps governments, especially democracies, run well. In a democratic government, people vote for the leader. Democracies need to know everyone who is old enough to vote. The two oldest known censuses were taken in China. One was taken in 2 AD and the other in 140 AD. The Bible also tells of three different censuses. Censuses were taken by the Roman Empire too. A person counting Romans and getting the taxes was called the censor. Number one. What is the topic of the lecture? Number two. Why does the professor mention the Bible and the Roman Empire? Number three. Match the information with the appropriate location. Skill E. Making inferences and predictions. 1. Campus life. Hey, neat! You got a telescope for your birthday. Yes, now we can look at the moon. Can we see any planets with this telescope? Yes, we can most easily see Mars. It's closest to Earth. And Venus? It's the next closest. Is it true that Mars once had rivers and oceans? A lot of scientists think so. Did you know it has two moons? No. Amazing. How many moons does Venus have? None. Do you think people will ever visit Mars? Maybe someday, but not Venus. It's too hot. Well, at least we can see them with your new telescope. Number one. Indicate whether each item below characterizes the planet Mars. For each phrase, mark the correct box. Number two. What are the people mainly discussing? Listen again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. Is it true that Mars once had rivers and oceans? A lot of scientists think so. Did you know it has two moons? Number three. What can be inferred about Mars? Two, phys ed. Soccer or football is one of the best liked sports around the world. It's an easy game to understand, but it has many rules. Each player must follow the rules carefully. A player who doesn't can be given a yellow card. This is a warning. A player who breaks the rules many times may get a red card. A player who gets a red card is forced out of the game. He or she will not be allowed to play anymore. There is one very basic soccer rule. It is one that everyone knows. A player cannot do anything that could hurt another player. Number 1. Indicate whether each phrase below relates to a yellow card or a red card. For each phrase, mark the correct box.
Number 2. How is the information in the lecture organized? Number 3. What does the professor imply when he says this? A player who gets a red card is forced out of the game. He or she will not be allowed to play anymore. Three, literature. There's a famous story about Mark Twain. Once he got on a train in New York. I don't know where he was going, but the train was full. A ticket office worker said there was no room on the sleeping coach. But on the train, the conductor saw him and came right over. He showed him to his sleeping coach in first class. He made especially sure that Twain was comfortable. Then he said, I'm so proud to have you on this train, sir. Mark Twain asked, Oh, who am I? And heard, General McLennan. You can imagine his surprise. Number 1. Indicate whether each phrase below relates to Mark Twain or the train conductor. For each phrase, mark the correct box. Number 2. What is the main idea of the talk? Listen to part of the lecture again, then answer the question. Then he said, I'm so proud to have you on this train, sir. Mark Twain asked, Oh, who am I? And heard, General McLennan. Number three, why did Twain say this? Oh, who am I? Four. Psychology It's important to choose a job that's right for your personality. Are you a friendly person who enjoys meeting people and talking with them? Perhaps you should become a salesperson or a teacher. If you're quiet and thoughtful, maybe you should be an accountant or scientist. Think about what your job requires. Will you be interacting with others or spending most of your time alone? There are many factors to consider in choosing a career. Money is certainly one of them. So is social status. But remember, whatever you decide, you have to do that job every day. Choose carefully. Number 1. Indicate which job characterizes which personality trait. For each job, mark the correct box. Number 2. What is the main idea of the talk? Number 3. Who is the speaker most likely speaking to? Five. Campus life. Hey, Tony. Want to go play basketball? I can't. I've got to study for my midterm exams. Man, you can't study all the time. You've got to exercise. How? I don't have the time. You can do simple things like... Instead of taking the elevator to class, walk up the stairs. And when you're studying, take a rest every hour and go for a short walk. Hmm, yeah, I could do that. You know, just squeezing a tennis ball makes your hands stronger and helps you relax. That's easy. Anything else? Yeah, walk backwards sometimes. It strengthens the back of your lower legs. Thanks. Have fun at basketball. Number one. Based on information in the talk, indicate whether each item below is used in a simple exercise. For each phrase, mark the correct box. Number 2. What are the people mainly discussing? Listen to part of the lecture again, then answer the question. Man, you can't study all the time. You've got to exercise. How? I don't have the time. Number 3. 
What does the speaker imply when he says this? I don't have the time. Six astronomy. Okay. Hmm. We all know that the Earth spins as it rotates around the sun. Does anyone know how fast it spins? Two thousand kilometers an hour. Close. About two thousand two hundred kilometers an hour. It turns completely around once each day. Now, what would happen if the Earth stopped spinning so fast? If it slowed down to one rotation every 365 days, every place on the planet would have either daylight or darkness all year long. This is similar to the situation on the moon. For two weeks, the sun shines on the front side. Then, for two weeks, it shines on the back side. How do you think a slower rotation would affect your lives? Number one, match each choice with the correct category. Number two. How does the speaker present the information in the lecture? Number three. Why does the professor say this? How do you think a slower rotation would affect your lives? Seven. Campus life. I finished writing my paper on the American Revolution. Wow, I'm still looking for information on George Washington. Well, I saw a TV show about it last week. I wrote down all the important people and then looked them up on the internet. I wish I'd seen that show. You can still find information on the internet. Just type the words you're looking for and then click the search button. I tried, but it gave me so many websites. Maybe you can ask Professor Cohen if there's a good video you could watch. That would help you know what to look for. Number one, match the following facts with the correct student. Number two, what will the man probably do next? Number three. What are the students mainly discussing? Eight. Psychology. It's easier to remember something if we make a picture or image of it in our minds. You can remember a common object by giving it three qualities: detail, color, and movement. Take something you often lose, like a key, for instance. Make the key special in your mind. Give it detail. Imagine it has very sharp teeth. Then give it color. Make it shiny gold. Finally, give it movement. Imagine it is alive. If you don't watch it, it could jump up and lock you out. If you think of it this way, you're not likely to forget it again. Number one, match each phrase with the appropriate memory-helping quality. Number two, what is the organization used in this lecture? Number three, why does the professor say this? Take something you often lose, like a key, for instance. Scale F. Placing steps in a sequence.
1. History Spain is a country in southwest Europe, south of France, and west of Italy. In the 16th century, it was the most powerful nation in the world. After America was discovered in 1492, Spain sent many people there. They brought back lots of gold and silver. Trade with the new American colonies made Spain rich. It established colonies in other parts of the world, such as Cuba and the Philippines. But in 1588, Spain lost a famous war against England. After that, its power began to decline. In 1898, Spain lost Cuba and the Philippines in the Spanish American War. Number 1. The speaker explains a sequence of events. Summarize the sequence by putting the events in the correct order. Number 2. What will the speaker probably discuss next? Number 3. What is the main idea of the talk? Two, campus life. Dr. Shin, how long have you been a university professor? 18 years, Sandra. Could you please tell our campus radio listeners what made you want to become an educator? I guess it was my mother. She was a writer. At an early age, she taught me that the pen is mightier than the sword. So, when I entered university, I started to study writing. And you became a writer like your mother. No, I actually never wrote any books, but I did discover that I love teaching, so I've been a writing teacher ever since. Well, we're certainly glad you became one. Personally, I really enjoyed your class. Thank you for being on the show today, Dr. Shin. Number 1. The man explains his experience. Summarize his experience by putting the steps in the correct order. One choice is not used. Number 2. What do we learn about the man from this conversation? Number 3. What is the main topic of the interview? Three. Literature. Batman has changed several times since he first appeared in a comic book in May 1939. The first Batman is now called the Golden Age Batman. He was famous for using his mind, not his strength, to catch criminals. In April 1940, Robin first appeared as Batman's partner. In April 1943, Batman and Robin were joined by their butler, Alfred. He was the only one who knew Batman and Robin's real names. In 1952, Batman teamed with Superman for the first time. In May 1964, the new look Batman appeared. His costume had a black bat in a yellow oval. The first Batman did not have the oval. Number 1. The speaker explains a sequence of events. Summarize the sequence by putting the events in the correct order. Number 2. What can be inferred about the Golden Age Batman of the 1940s? Number 3. What is the main idea of the talk? Four. Ecology. The kind of oil that usually spills into the sea is called crude oil. Sometimes it leaks naturally. Other times, humans accidentally spill it when digging for oil or carrying it on boats. When oil spills, three things happen spreading, evaporation, and emulsification. In spreading, the oil forms long, narrow strips called windrows. You can remember this word as wind plus rose. 
the wind pushes the oil into long rows across the water. In evaporation, the lighter parts of the oil disappear; only the heavier parts remain. In emulsification, E M U L S I F I C A T I O N, the waves mix water into the oil. This forms a heavy and sticky substance, which is sometimes called chocolate mousse. The oil also mixes with other things floating in the water. Number one, the speaker explains what happens during an oil spill. Summarize the process by putting the events in the correct order. Number two. What can be inferred from the talk? Number three. What is the talk mainly about? Five. Campus life. I don't feel well. I think I'll skip class today. What's wrong? I feel hot, then cold, and I ache all over. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. You'd better take your temperature. Do you have a thermometer? Yes, I do. Here you go. Thanks, Joe. Here, let me read the thermometer for you. Uh oh, your temperature is really high. You'd better go see the school nurse. You know, I could have malaria. These are malaria symptoms. I just came back from a trip to Africa with my parents. I wasn't very good about taking my medicine. Number one, the woman concludes she may have malaria. Summarize the process that led to her conclusion by putting the steps in the correct order. Number two, what do we learn about the man from this conversation? Number three, what is the main idea of the conversation? Six, science. Light travels at two hundred ninety-seven thousand six hundred kilometers per second. That's pretty fast. Sound travels much more slowly at one kilometer per three seconds. Knowing this, we can judge the distance of a storm. When you see a lightning flash, begin counting seconds. When you hear the thunder, stop counting. How many seconds have passed? The lightning is one kilometer away for every three of those seconds. There's another way to know how close a storm is. As rain falls, it cools the air. That cooler air may flow about three miles ahead of the storm. The air becoming suddenly cooler tells you about how close it is. Number one, the instructor explains how to judge the distance of a storm by the lightning and thunder. Summarize the process by putting the steps in the correct order. Number two, why does the speaker mention cool air? Number three. What are the students who hear this lecture probably studying? Seven. Campus life. Hi, Barb. How was your vacation? Great. We went to New Mexico. You went to Mexico? No, New Mexico. It's a state in the southwestern U.S. The license plates there say USA. So people don't get confused. That's funny. What did you do there? Well, on our way there, we stopped at the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It was awesome. Then we went to Albuquerque, the biggest city in New Mexico. Then we visited Carlsbad Caverns. What are those? Caves. Sixty miles of them. In one cave, we had to wear hats with lights so we could see in the dark. Number one. The woman explains where she went. Summarize her experience by putting the events in the correct order. One choice is not used.
Number 2. What can be inferred about the man? Number 3. What is the subject of the conversation? Eight, history. Leonardo da Vinci was not only a great artist, he was also a scientist and inventor. Leonardo was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. He began studying painting at age 14 and became famous just a few years later. His best known paintings are Mona Lisa and The Last Supper. But Leonardo was also an excellent scientist. He kept detailed notebooks of observations about the natural world. And he cut open dead people to learn how the human body works. Finally, he was an inventor. But his two most famous inventions, the parachute and the war tank, weren't built until after he died. Number 1. The speaker explains a sequence of events. Summarize the sequence by putting the events in the correct order. Number 2. How does the speaker feel about Leonardo's work as a scientist? Number 3. What would be the best title for the lecture? 